What's going on guys? Christy and I just finished up a workout at the house this morning. Uh, we did some dumbbell snatches and burpees and we rested a couple minutes and had a second part to that. But during the dumbbell snatches, it got us thinking and we realized that there's some common faults that we see with those that are very correctable. Whether it's just positioning, sometimes it becomes lower back pain, or sometimes it's just using the wrong muscle groups. But we've had some requests to do a video on dumbbell snatches and it's something that we correct or see that we can add benefit to at our gym all the time. So we're gonna take a little bit of time here. We're gonna work through some of the portions of getting the dumbbell up there, getting the dumbbell back down, and a couple different variations of doing that, along with being a little bit more efficient while doing them. Because this is primarily a cardio-based movement. We understand you guys are doing them during workouts, not so much strength training. So the first thing, there is two different kind of positions that you can do a dumbbell snatch in. We can do one that's a little bit more like a conventional barbell snatch, where the dumbbells may be turned sideways to where it's facing the same way a barbell would. We do keep it close to the body. And then a lot of times when people do those, they still keep it turned at the top when they finish their rep. They're not the most efficient way to do a dumbbell snatch, even though they may be the most practical. But the majority of the time we're doing dumbbell snatches are in workouts or in wads during CrossFit. So there's a way that's a little bit more uh, efficient and we can use our post here a little bit easier for doing those. And that means that we're doing a little bit more hinging. So when we do the traditional style barbell snatch, our hips are a little bit lower, our chest is maybe a little bit taller, and the dumbbells may be in front or in line with our toes. And then we can explode up that way, it becomes a little bit harder to cycle. So once we get to the top, recreating that from the top down isn't the most efficient and tends to leave people in a bad position. So what we recommend doing, what we see kind of be the most efficient, is starting with the dumbbell behind the toe line. So maybe even where my heels are, where I'm reaching up, where I'm reaching backwards, I'm reaching in between my legs, to where I'm loading up my post here, I'm in a good hinging movement, a little bit more like a kettlebell swing than the traditional snatch, then I get to pull and lock out overhead. On the way back down, I can retrace that, and by pushing it back in between my legs, I can reload my hamstring. In the other side of that, like we were talking about before with a little bit more traditional style, what we see is when people come back down and the dumbbell is either touching in between their toes or even a little bit in front of that, it tends to make them bend more than hinge and that puts a little bit more pressure on the lower back as well as the shoulders where we're just not working efficiently and we're not really using the muscle groups that we want to with something like a dumbbell snatch. So hinging in general means that we're wanting to push our hips back and load our posterior. Those are big jumping, exploding muscles. They're the same muscles that we would use for a box jump where we're gonna reach our hips back load up and then explode and we want to be able to replicate that with our dumbbell snatch so when i'm coming back down there's a couple different ways of doing that if you can do kind of the teardrop fashion where we drop it from above the head and you can find it with your other hand on the way down that's totally fine if you're comfortable enough doing those personally i think it's a little bit easier when i finish my rep to come back down to my shoulder break momentum push it in front of my face where i can see the dumbbell and i can see both of my hands make the switch where there's not a whole lot of momentum with the dumbbell, then grab it and catch it on the way down, loading my posterior back up, reaching between my heels for that double touch of the dumbbell head, and then I'm loaded and in a good position for the next dumbbell snatch. For a dumbbell snatch, it's gonna be a little bit different than a barbell snatch. When we are doing a dumbbell snatch in a workout, we wanna think about trying to keep our heart rate down. For instance, if we're doing thrusters and we're trying to sprint them as fast as we can, our heart rate's gonna skyrocket. Versus if we can keep a smooth control rhythm on that thruster, it's gonna keep our heart rate down just a little bit. So very similar for the dumbbell snatch. When we set up, we wanna get the dumbbell moving and we wanna keep it moving, but we don't necessarily need to sprint every single rep. So I like to think about picking where I rest if the dumbbell's on the floor and I'm gonna choose to cycle, I keep it close to my body and I try to take just a half of a second at the top and then I like to pass by dropping. I think about passing it to my other hand and then I'm gonna carry that momentum down to the floor and transition it back to the top. Then I'm breathing and relaxing at the top. You could re rest at the top in that nice stable locked out position or you can rest with the dumbbell on the floor. So I'm gonna follow it down take a breath, switch my hand, go back up. I'm not gonna spend as long as time at the top because I wanna keep that dumbbell moving and keep my momentum knowing that I'm gonna be resting on the ground. So I think it's very important kind of picking your place to rest because we are gonna need somewhere to rest in a dumbbell snatch. It's a very high heart rate movement with traveling down and up, similar to a burpee or a thruster, anything like that. The next piece I would say is just make sure that we're keeping it as close to the body as we can, and if we need to, get under the dumbbell. So if it's starting to feel a little bit heavy, instead of doing this big jump and explode, 
just think about almost like we're re-dipping like a push jerk and then we're punching out. That's gonna allow us to not have to pull quite as high to get the dumbbell overhead. For those of you who do have maybe lower back problems with anything where you're supposed to be hinging, whether that be a deadlift, a kettlebell swing, a slam ball, or a dumbbell snatch, the two things that we see make the biggest difference to eliminate that lower back pain because it is not necessary and it is avoidable is one, when you do start feeling that pain, that should be an indicator for you to push your hips back further. The tendency when we've got lower back pain seems to be to wanna keep our butt underneath of our hips because it feels safer. And what that tends to do is put more pressure on our lower back rather than less. So when you feel that pressure or that pain start to build up, that should be a cue that you need to push your butt back further, that turns your hips into the hinge point, and make sure that we're loading there instead of your lower back. Our hips are great at that, they can withstand a ton of it, and that makes sure that our big muscles in the back are doing the work. Uh, so Christy's gonna show you guys some exercises that we can do to one, turn on your post here, and then also strengthen it. Because uh, sometimes for people who are quad dominant, that can be a little bit more challenging thing to do to make sure that our backside's working as hard as our quads are. If you know you're gonna have a lot of dumbbell snatches or a high volume posterior working coming up, working, posterior workout coming up, one thing I highly recommend is making sure we activate it and we turn it on so we know how to use it during the workout. So here's three of my favorite drills that just require a small monster band. You can do all three of these drills right before you get started. It's gonna bring a really good activation and a really good pump to your glutes, to your hamstring. That way we're ready to use those glutes and hamstrings and not just rely on our lower back. Drill number one, we are gonna do a standing single leg clamshell. So I'm gonna show you two variations. I do like to take my shoes off for this just to make sure that I can feel the floor and my big toes are staying pressed into the floor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the band around. I like to go just above my knees. Then from here, what you can have a PVC pipe out front or you can work on your balance. I started with a PVC and I've progressed to not needing it. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna plant and you're almost gonna do like a single leg RDL on the leg that is planted to the floor. And then from here, you're gonna think about applying pressure from the knee out to the band. And we're just gonna go at about 45 degrees, just kicking back, engaging our glute. So 15, 12 to 15 reps if we can. You're gonna feel this in both glutes. So you're gonna feel it in the stabilization leg because we wanna keep the femur from rolling in by rolling that tibia and fibia out. And then we will also feel it in the glute that is doing all of the work that's doing the ice skating or the 45 degree clamshells on the standing leg. Exercise number two is going to require a long band and our monster band, and it's gonna be a banded hip hinge. So I'm gonna leave the monster band right around my knees, just above or just below. Then I'm gonna take my band and I'm gonna hook it around the rig post. I'm gonna step into the band, put the band around my hips, and step out away from the rig so there's tension on the band. From here, I'm gonna think about engaging my midline and then thinking about the hinging motion, letting the band pull my hip bones back towards the rig post. What I wanna do is think about my shin staying vertical, my weight staying in my heels, and letting my shoulders go forward as my hips get pulled back to the rig post. This is gonna help us prime a very good hinging position, focusing on our hamstrings and our glutes with a little bit of assistance and resistance from the band. The monster band around the above, upper or lower knee is gonna a provide feedback so our knees don't cave in. So we want to think about just keeping our knee tracking over our second toe by just gently applying a little bit of pressure into that monster band and that's going to help us make sure we don't fire our quads and that we can keep our glutes turned on. The last drill is just back to our monster rock band. It is super easy and it's extremely effective for really lighting up and turning on those glutes. So it's gonna be a standing kickback. You're gonna plant your weight on one foot in an athletic stance. Try not to let the knee cave in. Think about keeping that knee turned out. Nice tight midline. Then we're gonna kick back about 45 degrees with the band around our ankle on the opposite leg. We don't have to think about a huge range of motion here. We just wanna think about locking out the leg, leading from the heel and squeezing our butt as we kick back. Then once you complete 10 and 10 kickbacks on each side, I like to go into 10 monster walks to the right, 10 to the left, 10 forward, and 10 backward. I love to hit two sets of that, and that's gonna have your posterior feeling on fire and ready to go. Hopefully this video has been super helpful. We've answered some of the questions about the dumbbell snatch. We've hopefully given you some drills to make sure you're activated and ready to go so we can take out that lower back pain, really focus on using our glutes and our hamstrings, and move our dumbbell more efficiently throughout our workouts. If there's anything else you guys wanna see us break down, feel free to drop that in the comments. 
Don't forget to smash the like button and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and give those drills a try. I promise they're life changing. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.